Welcome, welcome. If you're just popping in, feel free to hop in the chat box. Tell us where you're joining from. We would love to hear from you guys. And I'll say this again before we get started, but if anybody has any questions throughout this webinar or throughout, I should call it just a nice chill chat, right, Russ? Not so much a webinar. <laughs> I don't like but webinars. if you guys have any questions, feel free to get in there in the chat box. We'll be checking them and we'll get to your questions at the end. We'll leave a little bit of time for you there as well, so. What's up, Linda, Jacksonville? Tampa, Florida representing. I am, I am a Seminole. Uh, I went to Florida State, I worked at Florida State, got my master's degree from there. So I'm, I'm, I, have, I have some polarizing relationships. I work for the Yankees <laughs> and you either love them or hate them. And I work for Florida State, and in this state, you either love them or you hate them. So it's, uh, it's interesting. So hopefully Exos kind of mellows, equals everything out. So now everybody hates me as much. Right. I know. Jennifer, yes, Yankees. I put, I brought my Yankees hat. I was going to wear it to this webinar, but then I thought maybe I'll just, I'll leave it. Just in, I don't want to, I don't want to create fights on here, you know? <laughs> you, show bias. you show your bias towards the, the interviewee. That's probably not good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and I wasn't even a Yankees fan until I moved to the city so I was a fan of really no one but I had to I had to go all in you know New York for life yeah the the, the, the hat's much better looking than the Mets hat so right <laughs> more the fashionable yes. so, so th this is Shauna from South Dakota I'm gonna say uh, go twins <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> that sounded like a question mark after it Shauna <laughs> Because there is one. <laughs> oh, it hurts. Every year it hurts. Oh, well. <laughs> so, Shauna, so Shauna, side note, just uh, interesting fun fact about myself is uh, I'm from Omaha, Nebraska, and my first school was University of South Dakota. Uh, I was a, a coyote and uh really for, yes for two years and then i transferred to south carolina but uh i started out at university of south dakota that's wow. right russ we went to the same school that's right you know uh i'm surprised to hear them, you calling them coyotes though you know it's yotes the yotes, the yotes. <laughs> they were the coyotes they were the coyotes when i was there and then they became the yotes and our mascot when i was there was it looked like wiley i'm like that's the biggest loser ever. <laughs> I know. I can't I can't remember remember that. The, old, the old coyote was very cartoonish. <laughs> yeah. And so you're like, you can't have that as a mascot. Let's pick something that's a little bit more fierce. And so they changed the logo on the helmet, became more fierce. I mean, everything. Yeah. A little more wolf like. <laughs> oh, funny. Well, all right, everyone. We'll go ahead and get started here. I see we've still got a few people joining, but that's all right. We'll get started so we can fit, hopefully everything in in this chat, but it's going to be tough because we've got a lot to talk about today. So I'd just like to start off by saying hello. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Brooke. I am the general manager for Live Well Fitness. And today we have a very special guest with us. We're very excited. A former professional baseball performance coach and athletic trainer. Okay. And get this, you guys, he's worked 11 years with the New York Yankees four seasons at Florida State University, and he's been with our company Exos for 14 years. And this is Russ Orr. Welcome, Russ. Thanks for having me. It's exciting. I, I was I was honored when Jennifer reached out and said, hey, can you join and do this for us and, and be a part? I'm like, sure, that'd be awesome. Uh, probably my strength will be telling stories. <laughs> we love that. And we really appreciate you being here. We love to tap into your expertise. And uh, for us at Exos, it feels cool to have a little bit of a local celeb. But that's how I feel about it. <laughs> like I said, sometimes that celebrity can be polarizing. <laughs> right, right. I feel you. So <clears throat> we're going to get started today, everyone. And, uh, you know, if you if you're familiar with Live Well Fitness and with Exos, we, we provide the resources for the health and fitness for you guys here at Citibank. And 
if you know anything about Exos, we've got four main pillars that we focus on to talk about everyone's well-being, right? We talk about mindset, movement, nutrition, and recovery. And, you know, more specifically, when, when we talk to Russ here, he's worked with these professional athletes and he has this six part strategy that help us focus on the essential qualities of performance. And so today we're really going to dive into how his experience, the six part strategy and working with these professional athletes who I am always so envious of and so curious about their training regimen and how they zone in, get in the zone, uh, because, you know, it, they just have to be top performers all the time, right? But if you think about it, even us in this corporate world or as a regular human, not professionally performing sports, we want to be at our top performance too. So uh, diving into that six-part strategy, Russ, you know, starting with resilience, which has been so important this past year and a half. And it's, I mean, it's always been important, but especially being resilient during these times of stress and anxiety. Uh, what can you tell us about resilience building. Thanks, Brooke, for the kind of the summary. But when we start to talk about M and MR, so mindset, nutrition, movement, recovery, of those being of like our pillars of performance. And I want to talk about these six part strategies that are kind of how those come to life. Okay. And and resilience training kind of brings the M and MR all together because it's a holistic approach. And I think back to if we if we take story time with Russ and then you know how do we life hack with Russ with Coach Russ. Story time with Russ, you start to think about when I was at Florida State, there was a, a freshman All-American shortstop that joined us. And, and when he joined us, he uh, came in and he had had a previous back injury. And in order for him to play, he had to do this daily routine for his back. He had to do these certain exercises prior to the game. He had to do these certain exercises after the game. He had to do these certain exercises on his off day. But those were his resilience building plan to keep him eligible and available for the game. And when I started out, he just said he was a freshman All-American at shortstop. He then transferred to become a catcher, which is a, a very tough position and, and very demanding position physically, mentally, everything. And so he relied on this program on a daily basis to get himself ready. And he ended up playing the next couple of years. And as a junior, got drafted as fifth overall prospect. His name is Buster Posey. He now plays for the San Francisco Giants. He won MVP, won Rookie of the Year, all these types of things. I just think about that daily practice, that, that what do you need to do to keep yourself healthy around mindset, nutrition, movement, recovery, to put you on the X, put you ready, game ready. So if you get up in the morning, you're like, I need X amount of sleep to be my best. You need to practice getting that seven to eight hours sleep every single night. If, if you need to stay healthy, to stay ready, if you need a certain amount of person, like proper nutrition or a certain amount of movement. So his was based out of movement, but that was what allowed him to be healthy and play on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's, that's the number one, be resilience building is what are you doing in your life to make sure that it's really holistic in, in nature, but what are you doing to make sure that you're at your best each day? Yeah, so important. And it's, you think about somebody who came back from a back injury and then had all those accolades. I'm sure we, uh, many of us here have heard the name Buster Posey before. Um, and so, I, I mean, that's something really inspiring too with, with resilience is the little things that we go through each day. You know, I mean, I have back pain and all I do is sit at a desk, right? I'm not going out getting, you know, major league baseball awards or anything like that. So it's so important, just those little things each and every day. I love that for us. Um, so, you know, moving on to, you, you talked about just having these daily things with movement. So how can we build that habit of the resiliency through adding movement to our days? What does that look like? Yeah. So we're huge proponents on daily movement. So making sure that you do something daily. So one of the strategies is having a daily movement plan and that daily movement plan is individual. So it could be something like what Buster did. It could be something that you're doing in the gym. It could be taking walks with your family. There's a variety of ways, but I think back to um, a guy named Derek Jeter. Um, probably not everybody knows, but when he was drafted in 1992, he spent the season 1993 in Greensboro. Greensboro's low A ball. And in that season, he committed 56 errors. 
56 errors. That's uh, in 140 games, 142 games, he committed 56 errors. I mean, I, I would have quit, right? I would have walked away. <laughs> of course, for, for everybody, he didn't quit. And, and what he ended up doing was every day in the next several off seasons, he would come to the facility every single day and grab a coach and grab a bucket of baseballs and go take ground balls. And he'd take a bucket or two of ground balls every single day. He did not miss. And so he would come in, take those ground balls and got better and better and better to where the next year he went from a ball all the way to triple A and, and got called up. And the next year he was rookie of the year. And inside there in his career, he won several gold gloves. So the best fielder at your position. And he committed less errors over and over again. But that was that daily movement practice. So he dedicated himself to not trying to be the best fielder today, like try to get it all done in one day, but take like one bucket of balls and then come back tomorrow and take one bucket of balls. And so we think about where do we lack movement? Like what are our issues? Do we sit at a desk all day long? So does that movement practice need to be some type of hip flexor stretch, some type of mobility for our T-spine because we're, we're slumped over the computer with our head forward? Inside that life hack, you need to figure out what that is that keeps you continually to get better on a daily basis seems to be my theme right now inside of your movement hack. So look for one of your coaches to give you some daily stretches or look for your coach to give you that daily walking plan or look for your coach to give you that daily running plan. But we really encourage your movement to be daily. Yeah. Yeah. And we just a little plug for what we have for you guys. Uh, if you haven't seen them, we have movement breaks every single day, multiple times a day to get up. And I think one thing too, to focus on is, you know, you just these little pieces, like you talked about Russ is, you know, even if it's not a huge long workout during the day, but you can fit a small five, 10, whatever minutes in a lot of times the mindset is like, ah, oh, what, you know, it's just a, whatever, it's a small amount of time. It's not going to do anything, but it really does. Right. Mm -hmm. has, yeah. a, has a dramatic impact. And so if we look at resilience building, I think that's kind of, I like that you started there. Because I think a lot of these things fit underneath there as well. So you start to look at this daily movement is going to play a role in keeping you healthy, keeping you game ready, so to speak. Yeah, you're so right. So we establish this habit of movement every day. It can be hard, but once you have that habit, hopefully it's something that sticks and keeps coming up every single day. But I've noticed, and even with myself, who, who ha you know has this knowledge of exos, hopefully a little bit, <laughs> um, it, you know, you sometimes I find myself doing the same thing every day and I'm, you know, maybe I plateau or I'm not seeing the results I'm looking for. You settle into something that maybe is no longer pushing you. So, you know, when we look at that, where, where maybe you have specific goals, um, how can we reach those goals through like self-reflection or looking back at what we've been doing? Yeah. Self-reflection is, is a key element to getting better because we got to know where we're at and be honest with ourselves and where we can be tomorrow and where we can be in the future. And so, you know, I think about pro sports, pro sports, you mentioned at the beginning are so demanding to perform on a daily basis, but our jobs ask the same thing of us to a, to a certain degree. You know, um, if I'm leading training with a group of coaches, I got to be at my best. I got to be ready for them. And then afterwards I got to look back and see what I could have done better because I got to continue to evolve and get better. But I think about pro sports being so demanding and knowing that from year to year, they have to get better from month to month. They have to get better from day to day. They have to get better. And they use, they use metrics, you know, where spin rate is a big thing. Everybody's talking about right now and it's controversial and, and people are cheating and different things are going on in pro sports, but inside there, they're looking at where they're at today. So self-reflection. And then how do I get a little bit more revolutions per on my baseball so I can get more strikeouts or more movement on the ball so I can get better or, or inside of the year, my son just finished his freshman year in, in college of baseball. And they told him you have to do X. And so now that was his self-reflection. Now he's got to develop a plan to get better for next year, because if he doesn't get better, he doesn't play. And what's interesting is that takes place from, from T-ball to coach pitch to little league all the way up. If you don't continue to get better in this self-reflection and figure out a way to get better, you just don't play anymore. And so inside that life hack, I think we start in the big picture first and you say, what are your annual goals? 
you know, you got to have goal setting. You got to look back and say, okay, what do I want to do for the year and set those goals and work towards them? Because that allows you to continue to progress versus staying in a rut. You then think about that daily reflection. I I probably should take a step back and say maybe journaling so you can keep track of things over time. We talk a lot about journaling and writing down uh, your goals, writing down your daily to-dos, writing down the things that are in front of you. And then you look at maybe like the self-reflection that I talked about if I'm teaching. So if I'm teaching somebody and I get done, the military calls it an AAR, after action review. And they always say they're not personal. They're they're about staying alive or saving lives, they talk about. But inside there is being honest with yourself. When you get done with this interview, what could have gone better? What could have been improved upon? And then so the next time I do something like this, I'll do it at at a higher level, so to speak. So self-reflection is is key to getting better. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we see that with our jobs too, right? Job reviews and and things like that. And so it's just the same with ourselves and our our personal performance. Right. Always trying to get better. I love that. So in order to get better, we have this self-reflection. We journal. We maybe look back at at our progress over the past year. Um, And we can see our weaknesses, but we can also be proud and see how far that we've come which can help us hopefully set more reasonable and better goals. So what can we learn about a progressive approach to training? Mm. Yeah. So if you talk about, we talked about resilience training or resilience building, we talked about daily movement. We've talked about this self-reflection and now we really want to focus on another element, which is your training needs to be progressive. Okay. And so what's the, what's the term? Uh, if you do the same thing over and over again and expect different results, I think it's called lunacy, right? You're, 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 you're believing something that's false. And so inside there, we think about progressive training. I think back to my days in, in baseball, when you start to think about the pitchers. So the starting pitcher throws every five days, right? They start and then they have four days in between starts and everything is periodized throughout there. They, they do certain things on day one, certain things on day two, day three, day four, and then they pitch again. And so inside there, they want to make that progressive in nature. And and there were two guys when I was around that had legendary routines, grueling hard routines, and that was Andy Pettit and Roger Clemens. And these two pitchers uh, would, on a weekly basis, they would pitch, and they're they're only going to throw like 30, 32 times in a season, you know, based on playoffs and things. And so they would pitch, and then they'd show up the next day, and they would have this major leg lift day, this major shoulder care day, this major cardio day, this major agility day. And they would spend, you know, 90 minutes to two hours of work, just working their bodies. But understanding that it had to be a progressive nature because they couldn't do that the day before they pitched. So that was their big day. Then the next day they did a little bit less, the next day a little bit less. And then the day before they pitched was some simple sprints and then they'd be ready to pitch. But that was progressive in nature. But also, if you think about the entire season, they had to break the season up into like little months or little seasons. So ultimately, they didn't get stale because if they do the same routine every five days for the next five, six months, they're going to get stale. And so they'd have times where they were pushing through or they're working a little bit harder. And then they have times where they're working a little bit less and times they're working a little bit harder. And so in there, that kept them fresh, that kept them healthy, that kept them going. But if we think about life hack is think about your training. Think about how your training is doing the same thing over and over and over again. Taking the same spin class three days a week is, is, yes, it's good. Yes, it's good. But it's also not optimal because you're not stimulating the body to go a step above. You're not stimulating the body to do a little extra cardio. You're just doing the same songs. You're doing the same routine. You're actually shorting up those hip flexors and creating that posture that you have at your desk on a daily basis as well. So how do we then supplement that? Maybe you need to have a stage of where you're doing a little bit of yoga in there along with your cardio class. Maybe you need to do a little strength training along with your cardio class. Maybe you need to do a little, uh, maybe you need to sign up with a personal trainer to take you through six weeks to continue to progress, to work through that plateau or through that obstacle. So I'm not familiar with all of your schedules and what you're doing virtually right now, but understanding that we want them to be balanced in nature. We want them to be progressive in nature. So you're not doing the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, absolutely. And that's just another great point, Russ, to working with a coach, like you mentioned, and a personal trainer is, you know, no matter 
how athletic or gifted or how much you know about it. It's just so great to get somebody else's perspective and have somebody else sort of challenge you because, you know, you get into, like we said, a routine or something you like to do certain exercises or you like to go to your spin class three times a week. But I know for myself, I was just thinking about this this morning because I've been working with a coach with Exos and she's kicking my butt. <laughs> and so it's just nice to have that extra challenge where it's just something that I have not done in a long time. And that's a great, great point. Reach those goals. So the next point I want to touch on is sleep. And I know you talked about this a little bit earlier, you know, if you need that seven, eight hours of sleep, whatever. And uh, for those of you that aren't aware, we're running a sleep webinar series actually right now. We're in the middle of a, a six part sleep series. So we just had our first one last month. Our next one, guys, everybody who's here is tomorrow. Make sure you come to that as well. 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, but I think that through this and through the research that we've done with this sleep webinar series, I've just realized how crucial sleep is. Like, you know, we always know it's crucial. We always know it's important. Doctors tell it to us. Everybody tells it to us, but it's easy to just kind of be like, yeah, 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 I know. Right. Um, but what can we learn about sleep in reference to our daily performance and how important that is? Yeah. One of our mantras is work plus rest equals success. And, and too often that we're not afraid of the work. We're not afraid of working out. We're not afraid of getting after it. But in order for us to, to recover, for the body to recover fully, for the body to heal, for the body to, to grow, make gains, make progress, we ultimately need to sleep and spend that, that seven to eight hours doing that. And so I, I appreciate your shameless plug for your sleep webinar tomorrow. If you want to post the uh, URL in the chat, that'd be great. Uh, but inside there, I mean, once again, it's, it's not only education, but then also looking at your space and looking at you and, and that environment to optimize your sleep environment. And so I think back to pro sports and understanding that the athletes have to take care of their bodies, you know, their, their career is short, the time window for them to, to make money is, is a small window of opportunity. And, you know, I think back to spring training, um, the, the NFL does this as well at training camp, you'll see people showing up with their beds. So people will be bringing their mattress so ultimately, they're not going to chance their sleep with somebody else's bed or with a hotel bed or with something else. And so they'll trade that out for their bed and they'll bring their pillows on the road. They'll do things like that to help optimize their sleep patterns. Because if you think about it, if you go on the road and you go to a hotel and you're sleeping on an unfamiliar pillow, I mean, everybody in this you can feel that already. Everybody in, in this on this webinar can feel that, you know, that pillow that's it's too hard, too small, too low, whatever it is, not like yours or smells funny. And that's going to affect your sleep patterns. And so ultimately, these guys would bring their pillows. And so they would set up their bed. And so then ultimately, their environment, their sleep environment is as consistent as possible. So they can get the consistent amount of sleep on a regular basis. And so it seems like a, a small little thing right bring your bed or bring your your pillow to spring training or bring it to training camp but ultimately that allowed them to maximize their sleep and maximize their performance and so life hack sleep hygiene we need to look at your environment is it cool to help you to sleep is it dark is it without noises what is the smell in that room what are you doing with electronics you know a couple hours before bed because if you're looking at the watching tv or you're on your phone or you're doing electronics melatonin can't kick in so ultimately you're not going to get the quality of sleep you're supposed to get and so you you evaluate your own situation what is your caffeine what is your alcohol intake all these things that a coach can walk you through and so if you get with that coach, say, hey, I need to understand better about sleep hygiene, that coach can walk you through and look at your environment and then make small tweaks to improve your sleep habits. And that's going to pay huge dividends inside of your, your day to day. Wow, that's incredible. They bring their their mattresses or their whole, their whole beds with. I know a lot of us probably can't handle bringing maybe an entire bed with us on vacation, but I will take your life hack of taking my pillow because I do notice that big time. And I'm somebody who holds tension in my neck and shoulders a lot. And so I notice when the pillow is not my pillow for sure. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, so the last one, I know we're getting close on time here. So we'll leave a few minutes at the end for your guys' questions if you have any. But my last question is about nutrition. And I think this is one of the most interesting and of course, it's fun to eat. I love food. I think everybody hopefully loves food too. Um, but also the most challenging because it's so difficult to 
you know, sort out all of the science and, you know, like, are these professionals, are they working with nutritionists? So how do, how can we optimize our nutrition and how, like, how do they optimize their nutrition? Are they working with someone? You know, they've got super busy schedules. I know that our people working in offices have extremely busy schedules. Meals are getting skipped. We're taking the easy route. Like what can we do to reach those optimal nutrition goals? Yeah. I mean, working with nutrition is going to be great. Um, guys on the road, like guys, guys in the big leagues, that'd be, I remember a time when the guys had a, a delivery system. And so they would meet with the dietitian, dietitian would figure out their calories. And then they would figure out what meals they want at home and what meals they want on the road. And then they would actually send their meals to the hotel. And so they get to the hotel and there'd be a cooler waiting for, or like a, a styrofoam cooler waiting for them. And they'd have your, your breakfast, your snack, your lunch, your snack. And then they'd have dinner at the ballpark or dinner after the ball, after the game or whatnot. But learning from that, what that is a proactive approach. It's looking at your day. So right now I saw you grab a water bottle and you took a drink out of that water bottle. That's a proactive approach to nutrition is having that water bottle filled in by your side. And so I have a glass of water here and, and it's sitting there ready to go. Taking a proactive approach to saying, what am I have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner today? What am I have for snacks? When can I have them? Can I plan them? Can I pack them? Can I bring them with me? I mean, one of our life hacks is a snack drawer. You know, having some healthy snacks in a drawer at work. So in a drawer at work, now all of a sudden you have some healthy bars, you have some healthy nuts, you have some healthy, you know, maybe dried fruit, some different snack ideas and, and the trainers and the coaches would have ideas around those as well. But having those in your drawer at work, so then all of a sudden when you fail to plan <laughs> and so when you get to work and you need that snack, immediately you're able to go to that drawer and have a healthy snack. So being proactive is the key to make sure first you're having breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You're having your snacks. You've planned those out. And then we can start to make adjustments around what are the nutrients you're getting? What are the quality calories you're getting? Because that's like you said, a, a big challenge to figure out what to eat first, make sure that you're eating with consistency. Yeah, that's huge. Um, and it, I mean, it's like you said that maybe the planning is kind of the part that can make it easier later on. Right. Like, and with professional athletes, maybe they have some little extra help with their planning, but you know, you take a Sunday before your work week starts or whatever day that may be. And set forth a plan, whether it's a grocery list or like you said, some snacks or some foods, a plan for what you're going to eat for the week. It just, it makes it a lot easier. I know for me, meal prepping or making a bigger meal at the, at the beginning of my week and having my lunches ready is crucial. Cause when I am out of time and, and running, you know, crunching it, it's pizza down the block <laughs> every time. So yeah. yeah, very cool. Well, okay. That's all the questions that I had. Um, and again, thank you everyone for coming. If you, if you have to hop off, we're right at about 1130 here. We've got a few extra minutes on our Zoom meeting for questions. So if anybody has questions, feel free to, to pop them in the chat box. If I miss anybody, um, maybe Jake or Matthew, if you guys shout them out to me. And Russ, I don't know if you had any closing tips you want for us. This has been so great. So many great tips and so many cool stories. I love hearing this about all the professionals and the athletes. It's so cool. Well, probably the biggest tip is everybody says, you know, I'm not a professional athlete, but ultimately if they're, if they're focused on their nutrition, their performance, their sleep, their recovery, all those things at the highest level to perform to their best, why wouldn't we try to emulate those things? And we have to perform on a daily basis. We have to be ready to perform on a daily basis. We have to be at our best. We, we want to get promoted. We want to advance. We want to be the best we can be. Why wouldn't you scale those ideas? So um, hopefully that everyone wasn't intimidated by the, 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 the pro stories and not consider themselves a pro athlete, but I think everybody's an athlete. So is there one pillar that stands out for athletes to one pillar that stands out to athletes that struggle with the most? Oof, Shauna, that's a great question. When you talk about mindset, nutrition, movement, recovery, I think it's 100% individualistic. I mean, there's, there's pitchers that don't like to train. There are athletes that don't like to eat properly. There's people that don't like to recover. They burn the candle at both ends. There's uh, people that don't move well and, and cause dysfunction. So um, I think I think that kind of is individualized or individually specific. Good question.
There we go. Rebecca, there we go. <laughs> nice shout out. Yes. Jennifer just popped in the chat box. You guys, we do have a registered dietitian on staff. Her name is Rebecca Sabrine and her email has been posted in the chat box. But if you guys want to want to get in contact with her too, and you don't have that email, feel free to email livewellfitnessatcity.com or talk to any one of your coaches in your classes. They can hook you up with Rebecca and you do get uh, four free consults with her per year. So really cool perk. That's good. There's a sign up. There we go. <laughs> you guys are doing well in the, oh, there she is. Hey, Rebecca. <laughs> you guys are doing well with these links in the chat box. So quick with them. <laughs> you did really good, Brooke. I don't know how, how often you host a, a podcast or, or a blog or something along these lines, but uh, you did very well. So uh, I think everybody, well, everybody, should, everybody should give you a little golf clap. Dang. Wow. Thank you. You did great. I don't, I don't not know that I'm a great host, but I uh, just have a lot of questions in general <laughs> about life. So I could probably come up with 50 more, but I'll, I'll save everyone's days. <laughs> I think I'm having some technical difficulties. I, I, I think I'm having, she, she got 50 more questions. I have technical difficulties. Right. Oh, Please. sorry. My, my computer's glitching. See ya. My internet just went out. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, I think we're, we're headed towards the end here. So Russ, thank you so much again for doing us this fantastic favor. It was so great to learn from you and you guys, this is recorded so you can check it out on our YouTube page. We're going to put it on our podcast as well. So if you miss Russ, don't worry. There's many, many options. Send it to your friends. We can listen to it over and over again, Russ. Don't you worry. I guess I shouldn't agree to that statement at the beginning where it said I should have left. Right. <laughs> Too late now. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a Thanks great everybody. rest of your day. Thanks, Brooke. Thank you. See Bye -bye. you guys.